Welcome to the health video. My name is Kevin Yanni. I am a professor and extension engineer at the University of Minnesota. This video is one of several that provide useful science-based information about airborne emissions from animal feeding operations. Sometimes neighbors and community members are concerned about the potential health impacts of airborne emissions from nearby animal feeding operations. The goal of this video is to summarize the current understanding of airborne emissions and their impact on human health and well-being. To help us understand these health impacts, we interviewed Dr. Stephen Kirkhorn and Dr. Susanna von Essen. Both are medical doctors with master's degrees in public health. They have clinical experience with patients and research experience studying the health effects of airborne emissions from animal feeding operations on agricultural workers and community members. Dr. Stephen Kirkhorn was medical director of the National Farm Medicine Center and chair of occupational health at the Marshfield Clinic in Marshfield, Wisconsin for nine years. I was a rural physician for 10 years before I uh, went back to fellowship training in occupational medicine. And I've lived in rural communities. I know rural communities. My, my, um, you know, and I've seen people that uh, have been referred to me that had health effects because they were concerned about living next to an operation. I've seen workers uh, from agricultural operations that have uh, had um, uh, health effects, and I've had assessments, uh, and I've performed assessments um, upon health, you know, and looking at the impact from their operations. The difference between community health and occupational health is a degree of uh, exposure, a dosage, and how long uh, the exposure occurs. Uh, in an occupational uh, exposure, um, workers um, are exposed to higher dosages, but for shorter periods of time. Um, they may have, uh, they're both indoors and outdoors, so agricultural has changed, uh, so there's more indoor exposure. Um, certainly fa farm families uh, have almost the, s the same as occupational exposures, um, whereas in community, uh, health, community health and community exposures, they're lower level exposures, but they may be uh, for more prolonged periods of time. You know, uh, where people are living, it can be through a 24 hour period uh, compared to an eight hour period. And so it's a, it's a matter of degree, but, but otherwise the compounds are, are the same. The emissions uh, arising from agricultural operations are of concern include ammonia, uh, hydrogen sulfide, uh, volatile organic compounds or VOCs, um, also, there's been concern about particulate matter, which uh, are necessarily emissions, but the airborne and the respiratory, and then the microbial um, uh, organisms that are associated with those dusts. Well, one of the questions that comes up often is that uh, people that work there, if they're not having health problems, you know, why are community members concerned? Because the concentrations are much lower. Um, when you look at the differences in responses to, to, to emissions and uh, odors, uh, there is quite a, a wide variation in tolerance. Um, in, in my role in occupational environmental medicine, I've seen many people that can't stand the smell of, uh, of solvents, gasoline, fuel oil, perfume. Um, and they, they, it brings on health symptoms um, where people have had to stop wearing perfume and uh, or certain types of deodorants, uh, colognes in, in, in office settings. Um, whereas most of the people working in there can say, that's pretty strong, but you know, and that's, that's as far as it goes. And odor is a very, very powerful trigger of physical symptoms. Um, and so I think that uh, what, what is uh, maybe not the most pleasant for somebody, but they can sort of shrug it off and go on their way, which I would consider an average response to someone who just finds it so offensive, it makes them nauseous, they're getting headaches, uh, and they just, it brings on um, many type of symptoms, which is very unpleasant, and, and uh, you know, to them it's, it's, it's a health concern. They feel that their health is being affected because of this. But if you do physical measurements, you really don't detect anything. But, you know, that's the perception of health and it is, does bring on symptoms. And we did a systematic review looking at all the papers that had been published um, that affect, that address community health and animal operations. Primarily what we found the strongest evidence for is that people that found odors offensive uh, had more symptoms. You know, they had more symptoms of nasal irritation, wheezing, 
um, make uh, asthma worse. And people with already that had allergies were, were more sensitive with uh, odors and having symptoms also. The World Health Organization def defines health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. One of the issues I think is from the community, they probably follow more of the precautionary principle and that there's um, any exposure can be a, of a concern, whereas uh, from the agricultural producers, it's more show us the science. We need good science before we are, uh, that we sh need to change uh, you know, our, our operations. And I think the regulators get caught in between. You know, um, who, who, how can they walk the line to satisfy both? And um, unfortunately, there isn't real good science um, uh, based upon the expense of studies and, and getting good quality studies to really answer these questions. Dr. Susanna Von Essen is a professor in the Department of Environmental, Agricultural, and Occupational Health at the University of Nebraska Medical Center in Omaha, Nebraska. She's a pulmonary physician with a special interest in occupational health of people who work on farms. Health is really the complete general health of a person. Uh, it's not just the absence of illness. I would say the main health effect of odors uh, with reference to a livestock farm setting is that they impact people's well-being. They usually don't cause illness in the same sense that other exposures might, but we all, we all want our sense of well-being to be intact. We, we don't want to be annoyed, we don't want to be tense, we don't want to be angry, and odors can do all those things. That's been demonstrated. So they can impact the quality of your day-to-day -day life. Most of us don't mind an occasional odor spike, but if this happens repeatedly, if it happens in an uncontrolled way, unpredictable way, then it tends to be frustrating and annoying and a source of anger and tension. I think the health impacts are so complex because the emissions are, they consist of a variety of gases that make up these odors, there are dusts there, they are present in varying amounts, can vary tremendously with agricultural practices that may be seasonal, with weather conditions, with whether the barns are populated right now or not, how many animals are there on each site and and the effects really also vary tremendously with the people and their health and their emotional state um, all that factors in so every situation is different that makes it so challenging odors don't cause asthma but if you have asthma smelling an objectionable odor can sometimes cause an asthma attack odors don't cause allergies either but you could potentially have your allergy symptoms, your itchy eyes or your runny nose triggered by a strong odor. It wouldn't be because you're allergic to the pigs or the dust coming from a poultry house, for example, but it could be that uh, by other mechanisms, your allergy symptoms are triggered. Well, the problem with working with an average response to odors or, or working with just healthy workers' responses would be you ignore what sensitive populations need. Another way to put it would be vulnerable populations are out there. It, it might be people with asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It might be a pregnant woman. It might be a small child. So you. Every producer, I think, needs to understand their own situation. And before they make expansion plans or before they do certain things that cause odor spikes, they, they need to um, factor in who's, who's living there and what those people might worry about and might need. The science isn't very strong yet. Sometimes, though, decisions have to be made about regulations without necessarily having scientific evidence that is so solid that nobody can argue with it. We are still learning about the health impacts. What we do know is that odor is objectionable to some people. Do we have enough information to make policies about the odors, to regulate them? 
Perhaps not, but that's really not for me to say. Um, it is rather clear that this is an issue that people feel strongly about, and I think perhaps the time has come to to come to some consensus about uh, how to handle these matters so that we can move forward in, um, as, as an industry, as a livestock industry, and, and so that rural communities have some, some guideposts for how facilities can be expanded or not expanded depending on what people have decided. While the science to document a cause and effect relation between airborne emissions from animal feeding operations and community health impacts is lacking, there are clear indications that air emissions can raise legitimate concerns. Producers, managers, community leaders, and neighbors need science-based information to make informed decisions, decisions that balance the needs and concerns of neighbors in the community and the men and women who own and operate animal feeding operations. For more information about airborne emissions from animal feeding operations, you're encouraged to visit the air quality section of the Animal Manure Management Extension website. There you'll find videos, fact sheets, and archived webinars.